I'm going to be calling our next guest on stage real quick. Yes, um, she is an entrepreneur, economist, and a natural skincare expert. She's the founder and chief innovative officer of Uriki. It's an all-natural farm-to-skin personal grooming brand for men and women. She was selected as one of Nigeria's most inspiring women in 2017 and has also been nominated for the Future Awards um, Africa twice. She's a World Economic Forum Global Shaper selected into the African Leadership Network. I thought I would be hearing some pa 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 pa, so you know, some rounds of applause. And um, her company has been featured in publications around the world, including Huffington Post and Ebony. Please, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the CEO of Oriki, Joycey Awoshika. Hi, Joycey. You're going to stay over here. Thank you very much. And the last but not the least, as they say, um, she is the CEO of Demer Care Medical Limited with many years of experience in skin. Yes. I, I can't say too much about this woman because when she comes here to speak, you would understand where she's coming from. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Dr. Vivian Oputa as she takes on the stage. Thank you very much. Hello, doctor. We're going to start off with, um, and this is very interesting, and, and, um, on skincare, and Dr. Vivian is going to take us on that journey. Um, the pros and cons of bleaching. And when I saw that, Dr. Vivian, the first thing that came to mind was, is there any benefit in skin bleaching? Yeah, here's your mic. Yeah, that's it. Hello. Okay. Hi, everyone. As she's introduced me, I'm a medical practitioner, specialist in aesthetic medicine, surgery, and dermatology. And I have a passion for skin care, skin health, as a matter of fact. I don't encourage bleaching, extreme bleaching especially. But you know, when she asked about the pros, you know, a lot of people have asked me this exact question. I, are there the pros? Yeah. And there are pros. Because in medicine, we use bleaching therapeutically to correct pigmentation problems conditions like melasma, acne scarring, burns, and just, you know, irregular pigmentation. So in that case, we use safe products to help even out your skin tone or to treat the pigment problems. So there are pros. Now, do you want to go on? <laughs> yes. Concerning the cons. Yes, the cons. <laughs> the cons. Ah, where do I start? Now, it's become an epidemic. And worldwide, Nigeria has the highest percentage of bleaching individuals, women in particular, but there are a lot of men that bleach as well, right? Can <laughs> I name names? Okay, I'm there, joking. There are, <laughs> there are a lot of men that bleach. Now, the WHO states that over 77% of Nigerian women use some form of lightening or bleaching agents on their skin, and which could be really detrimental to health. Now, many of these products... Uh, have very toxic ingredients in them, and that's where the dangers lie. Everything you apply to your skin is absorbed into the bloodstream and could now target your vital organs like your liver, your kidneys, your bone marrow, and eventually will lead to your death. I'll be very frank about this, right? There's no mincing words here. You raised um, a point. You said statistically Nigeria has the highest rate of bleaching, bleaching women, women. And then, of course, a good number of men yes, in yeah. the world. Imagine that. Imagine that. So where does this problem stem from? Why? Well, you know, bleaching is actually common amongst women of color worldwide. Yes. So we're talking Asian, Hispanic, black, of course, and sometimes um, even, Caucasians. Even. Yes. I, they I want to be to snow white. So, now it stems from, I, I really don't know how to play. I don't want to say people have an inferiority complex, or, but the, the, um, the common factor is that many people think that they're more attractive when they're lighter. Yes, but there have also been such situations where people are chosen in terms of maybe employment. Exactly. People, that, yeah. Now that is the truth, because I've had a woman come to my clinic with her baby, a nine-month-old baby, asking me... If, what cream is best to bleach the child because the child was born light-skinned and now it's getting too dark 
and she knows that that will spoil the child's chances in future wow. of finding a husband Incredible. and getting a good job. So I was horrified. You know, that, that is how deep this problem has gone. Now, when I told her about the, you know, I mean, like, first of all, we don't even start to treat pigmentation in children until they've reached puberty because we don't want chemicals to disrupt their development. And I explained things to her and I said, look, you know what, if we were in another country, I would have had you arrested today. No, seriously, because you are the child's advocate and here you are telling me to prescribe harsh chemicals to bleach your baby. So she said, you know what, I'm speaking too much grandma. That she's going to the market, she will meet the traders and they will give her exactly what she needs. So just to show you how deep this is, it's so, so unfortunate. Now what I preach is skin health. Every shade is beautiful, right? So it's about taking good care of your skin and letting the glow come through. Now, uh, what bleaching is, because there are loads of names for it. Yes, bleaching and toning. We have toning. Now, people... Whitening, brightening. Whitening, brightening, exactly. But, you know, the mechanism of action of every product is essentially the same. But with the safe products, it only inhibits the enzyme that converts, you know, that is responsible for the production of your pigment, which is melanin, right? But it does not destroy the melanin-producing cells. Now, with um, extreme bleaching, most of the products destroy the cells as well, leading to damage and complete destruction of your skin. Now, if you notice that people who have extremely bleached, what we call extreme bleaching, their skin is compromised. It's wrinkled. It is, you know, just aging acceleratedly. And then when um, they need surgical procedures, for instance, this, the, 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 the wounds will not heal. So these are the problems. Now there's an extreme practice going on now, the rave worldwide in essence. It's an off-label and illegal practice, which is the glutathione craze and injections. It is not approved by the FDA in America for the purpose of bleaching. So it is, it's become, if you go to the market here, yes. tabs are coming up to you asking if you want injections to become half cast non-medical professionals and the you know the side effects of getting you never know what you're getting there might not even be real glutathione injections you you, you people i mean they're being it's being touted around in a crazy way now glutathione naturally exists in the body it's a very powerful antioxidant but as you age the levels diminish and it's not as effective that is well known now, it is actually produced and given to terminal, like patients who are on chemotherapy, you know, when they have this cisplatin chemotherapy, the side effects are so, you know, detrimental. They, it affects immunity. So this is why this product was created for terminal patients like HIV and cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy to help boost immunity. But a side effect is that it does inhibit the enzyme that creates a pigment. Now this enzyme, once it's inhibited, you don't create as much pigment, so you, of course you become lighter. So it's essentially a side effect. But now it's become an off-label practice and it is just about bleaching you. And do you know that melanin is very important? Does anybody know why you have melanin besides your color? Does anyone know? Does anyone know? Dr. Vivian, we need to tell them. <laughs> Nobody? Yes, please. To do what? Protect your skin protect from the UV. Skin. Yeah, that's exactly what melanin is for. So it's actually a blessing. Your melanin is stimulated when you go out into the sun because another complaint I get a lot in the clinic, oh, I'm just getting darker. I've been out in the sun and I'm getting darker. You know, the, nobody wants to get darker in this country. It's a crime to get darker. That's what I'm seeing. Oh, I'm getting darker. I'm getting black. Ah, everybody's complaining. I'm like, okay, do you go out in the sun? It is stimulated. Your coloring is stimulated to protect you from the harmful UV rays that could potentially lead to cancer and premature aging. So that is what it's about. So use of sunblock is very essential. It helps you I mean, for a period of only two hours, pre uh, you know, prevent the damaging effects of the sun. All right, so that's why your melanin, the more melanin you have, the slower you will age. Does that make sense? 
So if you notice, people who are very, very dark do not age as fast as very light. Like look at Caucasians, for instance. They age, age faster. much faster. True. A 20-year-old Caucasian already has wrinkles. Black but don't for, crack. Yeah, black, black don't, don't crack. crack. That's what we always say. So when you... <laughs> you've heard that, right? So when you decide you want to inhibit your melanin, it's just a recipe for disaster. And let me tell you what a lot of bleaching creams are made of here, especially the mixed creams. Who goes to mixologists? Women who mix creams and tell you it's a secret recipe. I don't want you to know what's inside it so that nobody will steal my secret. Have you heard that before? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, many of these creams contain ingredients like steroids. mercury, steroids, peroxides for bleaching hair, jick bleach. Yes. Yes. Throw that kum kum away oh, yeah, now. Definitely. And um, the steroids, right, are maybe a thousand times more in concentration of what we, what we prescribe clinically just to lighten your skin. Now, these thin the skin. If you notice, many women who bleach, their blood vessels are showing, right? Because the skin is thin. The blood, uh, blood vessel integrity is being compromised, so they're really fragile. Then, your kidneys are attacked. High steroid use, or even, you know, through your skin. Many people don't know that whatever you apply to your skin is absorbed into the bloodstream. Do you know this? How many of you know this by show of hands? Very, very few. So many people, oh, I'm just rubbing a cream. Nothing is going to happen to me. Anything you apply will be absorbed. And then your, your kidneys suffer and you will have adrenal failure. Have you heard of that? Things like uh, your kidneys will fail, then your bone marrow could be attacked, your liver as well. So what does it really profit you to be light and then lose your health or very possibly your life? Does that make sense to anyone? Wow, Dr. V, yeah. I'm just... I'm not trying to scare people. You should make informed choices. And I would yeah. say as well, safe. there are safe lightning products as well. Uh -huh. I'm not here to judge anyone. If you want to be lighter, by all means, do so within the margins of safety. But I'm telling you, the majority are not anything to be light. Even with burns, they come to the clinic burnt. Stretch marks from head to toe. Have you heard of that? Have you seen women with that? Because the steroids will make your skin really weak and you have stretch marks even on your face. Hmm. I've had a patient like that and she's like, I said, okay, the first thing we have to do, within two weeks of using a bleaching cream, she has stretch marks, I'm not joking, all over her body. In fact, it's, they, they de she developed in a week and then came to see me two weeks later. And there were stretch marks all over and then she now says... Um, so I said, you know, the first thing you have to do stop. is stop. She said, no, I cannot stop because I will get dark and people will say I'm suffering. I, I'm suffering. I mean, her skin was so fragile already. And she just, you know, it's, it's a psychological problem. So she, she, she ran away and I never saw her again. So maybe her skin has fallen off. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's a joke. <laughs> So, Dr. Vivian, um, because we are pressed for time, I mean, this yes. is such a very delicate and very informative um, topic. Yes. Yes. What would you, you know, advise anyone who's here, ladies, gentlemen, because men are also very concerned about their skin and how it looks. Yes. What would you recommend that you should do? So, whether you, for example, some people don't really want to be light. Now they say, I just want to be bright, you know, yes. just take it on from a little. What do you advise yeah. generally to men and women when it, con when it con concerns well, number one, skincare? I, I would say you should seek professional advice. Okay. From a proper professional. Okay. Okay. Now, when a woman says she wants to be bright, it's possible that she has a dead cell build up. Right. And once you're able to exfoliate the cells, she will brighten up. Taking the right vitamins, eating right, eating clean, these are things that will brighten up your complexion anyway. And then using sunblock. Sunblock. Yes. So professional Do men advice. use sunblock as well? Sorry? Men? Oh, of course. Everybody just should checking. use sunblock. Okay. Everyone. <laughs> On all exposed parts of the body, not just the face. Wow. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. V. Um, at some point, if there's any banter, I'll throw it uh, over to you. I'm going to move over to Dr. Ujurapu. So you are going to be talking to us about dealing with acne. Uh, yeah, that's it, dealing with acne and hyperpigmentation. I see that that is something that a lot of people um, are dealing with. But you might just want to help us and tell 
you know, just for the benefit of those who don't know what is acne, what is hyperpigmentation, and how can you, you know, get treated for it? Okay, so acne is more commonly known as pimples. I, <laughs> I decided this topic because I think this is one of the topics I get asked the most in clinic. Why am I breaking out? Why is this part of my face darker? So I figured we could talk about that together. So acne is a chronic skin condition, meaning it's long term. People find once they have it, they sort of keep having breakouts. Um, what happens is that we all have pores in our skin. So your pores produce oil and they're meant to sort of empty the skin out. Your pores get blocked. The oils are trapped in. There's bacteria from the skin trapped in. There's something called inflammation in the skin, meaning the skin, the pores are a bit irritated. And then you have this need to pick at your skin and it leaves a black spot. So I think even if people here, you don't have acne as a problem. Most people have gone through this. So I think it's one of the most common things I see. So that is what acne is. Hyperpigmentation, as the name implies. So we've just been talking about melanin. We're all nicely pigmented because we have melanin in our skin. Hashtag. Hyper, a hyperactive child is... So hyper means... Yeah darker so some areas are darker than normal likewise hypo some areas are lighter so i see a lot of hyperpigmentation this part of my face is darker i have black spots here so that's what hyperpigmentation means i think i've defined acne and i've defined hyperpigmentation are we all clear with the definition of acne and hyperpigmentation now do we have a better understanding yes at me at my market yes yes okay so um how can, you know, how can we identify these problems and what are the solutions uh, you know, that we could possibly take? Is there a DIY uh, method or do you have to seek, like Dr. Vivian said, professional medical? Um... Um, I think for any condition, I make sure anyone that sees me, we talk through what is causing it. I'm not going to jump in and start treating something if we don't know what's causing it because if we discuss and you know what's causing it, you can go home and work on preventing it and then I can treat it and know that I'm treating and you're getting results and it's not coming back. So there's a lot of causes of acne but we know that you know person A and person B what might be causing the acne is different but what's happening in the skin is the same. The blocked pores. The number one cause of acne is hormonal changes in the body. So you know for women you're going through menstruation, pregnancy, lots of hormone changes. I can't say you're never going to have acne again. Um, so hormones will be the number one thing. What can make your hormones imbalanced? Sometimes medical conditions people don't realize they have, something called polycystic ovaries. We normally ask questions like, is your menstruation regular? Do you have hair on your face? Can usually point to if it's a hormonal cause. Stress can elevate a particular hormone in the body called cortisol. Anytime one hormone goes up, there might be a bit of an imbalance and it could show on the skin. So medical conditions, sometimes cosmetic products you're using can block your pores. Um, diet can block your pores. Sometimes we find people traveling back and forth, just sort of changes in the environment can cause a change that causes breakouts. So what happens, the pores are blocked. What can block, block your pores? Not washing your face properly, not exfoliating your face properly, so more dead cells on the skin. So I normally would recommend products, prescription products or treatments such as chemical peels or chemical exfoliating products that are working to open the pores. So the number one thing is I want to stop your pores getting blocked. So are you washing your face? What products are you using? That's the first thing. Secondly, some people who have acne have really oily skin. So you find that excessive oil on the skin holds on to these dead cells that Dr. Vivian mentioned, and the dead cells are just sort of clogging the pores more. So we know there's certain things like links between dairy products and how much oil the skin produces. So I normally tell people to stay off dairy products for a while, and they'd see the benefit themselves. Sorry? <laughs> um, so in terms of the treatment for acne, I'm trying to put you on treatment that is keeping your pores open, that is attacking bacteria, because I know skin bacteria is clogged in your pores, that is possibly helping the, getting the dead cells off a little bit quicker. So most people know about retin A. It speeds up dead cells coming off the skin. So I would typically use cosmetic prescription products because, like I said, lots of things cause acne. I think anyone that has acne as a problem needs a consultation because the cause of your acne might not be the same as cause of hers. So we'll sit down and discuss, go through what products you're using. Sometimes we find cosmetic products you're using is making it worse. So I tell people who have acne not to put anything oily onto their skin. People that have acne, I prefer you don't use 
harsh, astringent toners because sometimes we find it strips oil off your skin and your skin overcompensates. So we go through sort of your routine. What do you use in the morning? What do you use in the evening? And see if there's any changes. Go through your diet as well. Um, no, no, let, me, let me ask you this. There's something that a lot of people do and I, you know, I get that a lot. You're using something, you probably have acne or hyper, you know, hyperpigmentation and you see your friend who's had it and she's using a product and it works for her and then she recommends it to you because it works. Sometimes it doesn't work uh, or sometimes it works. Now, some people have damaged their skin in the process because what works for A, like they say, might not necessarily work for B. Is it appropriate for you to seek proper medical consultation whenever you have anything on your skin or you can just do your own research or you can just ask your friend, what did you use? Let me use too. I always recommend a consultation because another thing is sometimes we have lots of stages of acne treatment. Most people will respond to stage one. I don't need to go to stage 10. One of the levels of treatment, I put you on an oral tablet um, and a, like an anti-androgen. It's basically a tablet that binds to some of the extra hormones I know may be causing acne in one person. So, um, uh. But I don't need some people on that and I talk through you know, how to mm -hmm. use the tablet, what you're eating. So a lady came in and said that she's taking 50 grams of this because her friend told her to take it. 50 grams? 50 milligrams, sorry. Yeah. But it's still... <laughs> no, I'm not even... I'm potential like... side effects of this particular medication are low blood pressure, passing out, oh, like, wow. problems. So I... That really alarms me that people can do that. Um, acne treatment is very personalized because what may be causing your acne is not what's causing the other person's acne. So I really, really recommend each person go and talk to somebody. This person's diet might be different from this person's diet. So the changes I'd make are different. So it's, I'd say treatment is very tailored and personalized to each person. So don't do what your friend is doing. And lots of the medication I find pharmacists are also handing out. I think medication should be prescribed by a doctor. So I would always recommend you see a professional. I have a very important question, and that's coming off Dr. Vivian's conversation. Recently, um, a friend of mine told me that, oh, you know, Kayla, you really, you're really into this skincare thing. Like, listen, I have this lady who's um, making products for a lot of celebrities. Uh, so what she will come, you pay, I think, 100000 She'll come over to your house with a series of products that she has prepared, like Dr. Vivian said. She will scrub your skin and then you have like aftercare products and your skin will glow and all that stuff. Kayla, look, it works. True to her word, she's looking snatched. I mean, she looks amazing. But I was like, well, I don't know what is inside this mixing thing that she's mixing. And so I wouldn't be using it. And um, is it, is it, should anyone not even use any of those products that we don't even know what they're mixing inside in the first place should we maybe that way we can actually cut this down when you're not sure of what is in the product i am strongly against mixed creams so a lot of people bring the products they're using and i can't even comment on it because i have no idea what's in it it might be working for them but you don't know what they're going to look like 10 years down the line right a lot of the mixed products the mixed creams like dr vivian says have hydroquinone steroids mercury you know, they may lighten your skin really quickly because, to be fair, skin lightening is always going to be in demand. So, it's, never gonna it's go always going to be in demand. So, I mean, I think there's safe ways to do it. But um, the creams, because you never know what is in it, the person mixing it probably doesn't know what's in it as well. She's probably taking other products, other oh, lightening yes. products, and mixing it together. Steroids, over time, reduce the immunity of your skin. So, as steroids will thin your skin, meaning that the veins... The blood vessels are closer, so people are like, oh, I have green veins after 10 years. Oh, what have you been using on your skin? Steroids will also mean your skin can't fight infection as much, so you might find that person is more prone to start having infections later. Um, hydroquinone, which is in a lot of bleaching creams, makes the skin more sensitive to the sun. The sun will also change how hydroquinone works in the skin. So you see a lot of market women using these lightning creams morning and night. And yeah. they're starting to look green and purple because it's not even working as hydroquinone anymore. So we do use bleaching creams in pres under prescription for hyperpigmentation. So we tell you how to use it. Don't use it more than a certain number of months. So they're not bad, but the problem is they've just been misused, misused. and overused. So I can't comment on mixed creams because I have no idea what's in it. And I honestly, I don't think the person mixing it knows what's in it as well. So I just say it's better to stay, stay off that. Yeah.
from that. The long-lasting effect of it is very it's, it's damaging. Uh, please put your questions together. I have to move on to uh, our next uh, speaker. Um, <laughs> I almost said Dr. Joycey. <laughs> Uh, our best speaker is the CEO of Oriki Spa. Um, I have Joycey Awoshika, and she's going to be talking to us about your best skin. And I think everyone is very, uh, you know, um, concerned about that. So what do you have for us, Joycey? <laughs> Thanks. I, I'll take the honorary doctorate. <laughs> um, do we have um, the slides? You did, huh? Do we? Our team? Okay. okay. Great, guys. I have a really quick presentation on your best skin and um, my two doctors to left and right have covered a lot about skincare and the importance of seeking consultations and making sure you don't just treat yourself especially if you have problem skin but I want to talk to you about just maintaining and promoting the best skin irregardless of the type of skin you have whether it be oily dry sensitive or what your skin concern is. There are steps you can take to promote a healthy regimen, and that's what we're talking about. Um, as Kayla mentioned earlier, Ariki is really keen on all natural skincare, and I'll make the disclaimer, that doesn't mean that it works for everyone. People often look at me and say, well, um, you have great skin, so it doesn't, you don't, but the point is that if you have acne or hyperpigmentation or issues, you do need to see doctors for professional advice. But natural skincare to me is essentially how many of us know that in Nigeria and in Africa, we have a plethora of natural resources? We know, right? Yes. So the whole idea behind Oriki is farm to skin, cultivating those natural ingredients and creating products to promote healthy skin. So we use things like shea butter, everyone knows, or Ori. We use aloe vera. We use moringa oil, all found within the continent and sometimes outside of the continent. So quickly, if I run through this, let's just be frank. Your skin is also affected by how you eat, what you eat, whether you drink enough water, um, whether or not you get enough sleep, whether or not you exercise. So at base, we need to be taking care of ourselves to have the best skin. And I'll put you guys to a test. Try having only water for seven days straight. Take a before picture and take an after picture. It doesn't matter if you're light skin or dark skin or the type of skin you have, you will see a difference oftentimes. And even if you're not able to sustain that, increase your water intake over time and see what it does for your skin. Um, moving right along, so let's feed right. You also need to treat right. And this is the skincare regimen that I want to touch on really briefly. Cleansing. We all know it's important to use a cleanser for your face. I've had people ask me, I don't, is it, do I really need to use soap on my face? I only use water. I mean, your skin is the biggest organ on your body. It's almost two kilometers. And it's very important because pores are entering your skin. The moment you step outside or even wake up, debris and things are entering into your skin. So you must wash your face and you must use soap. Again, depending on your skin, you may choose a different kind of soap. The next step is to tone. How many of us know what type of toner I'm talking about? Toning cream. Exactly. Not what Dr. Vivian was talking about. Not, not brightening, not lightening, but actually a liquid. It's an astringent. So basically what it does, and people debate whether or not it's important or not, um, it basically restores the pH to your skin after you've cleansed away skin cells and whatnot from washing your face. Um, the, last, the next step is to moisturize. Again, people have asked, is it important to put lotion on my face? It's important as well, as well to put moisture, moisture to moisturize your face, I should say. And then treating your skin. Doctors have mentioned on stage as well things necessary to treat. And I'll also add the importance of exfoliation, which Dr. Vivian mentioned is basically sometimes skin cells, or all the time, skin cells really, they, um, they build up on your skin and you have dead skin cells. And you may even notice, even if you do a DIY at home, a do-it-yourself, and you mix some sugar, some honey, some lemon, and you just rub it on a part of your skin, start with your hand. You can actually see or feel the difference between the part that you've scrubbed and the part that you haven't. So exfoliation is basically stripping away dead skin cells. Um, and I'm just about done, but the next slide is to protect um, sunscreen. How many of us have heard people say, well, I'm dark skin, so I don't need to wear sunscreen? 
No, sunscreen is for everyone. No matter what ethnicity, nationality, or skin shade you are, what it does is it protects the sun rays, the UVA and UVB rays that come into the skin and cause damage. So sunscreen is important. Additionally, the habits you have, like I mentioned before, how you eat, whether or not you smoke, whether or not you drink a lot, also affect your skin. Um, as we age as well, our skin does change, wrinkles and whatnot, and we've all heard of the anti-aging saga. Well, there are products that work towards for aging skin, like vitamin C, for example, as a, as a booster. Um, that's something else that you can also use for your skin, but you could seek advice for that. And then lastly, treatments, like treatments for blemishes, treatments for hyperpigmentation or whatnot. While there are some that you can use the natural way, like lemon on your face, for example, as a brightener, it is good to also seek advice, important to if it's, if it's a serious issue. Um, and last but not least, I would just say skincare is really all about being intentional. Um, it's all about your decisions. Do you want to have great skin? Not just lighter skin or fairer skin. Do you want to have healthy skin? Skin that when you're 75 years old, you're proud of. That you walk and they say, wow, I can't, ima I can't believe you're that old. So it's important what you put on your skin and how you put it. And jeans are not an excuse for bad skin. Make the decision to get flawless skin and change your lifestyle if you need to achieve that. Thank you. All right, a round of applause for uh, the CEO of Oriki. On that wonderful and final note, I'm going to take a last words from our speakers, each of them, just because uh, if I talk, I, I will leave here today from all that I've, I've heard today. But most importantly, they speak in one voice when it comes to skincare, just basically being intentional about your skin, you know, taking care of it, doing the right thing and avoiding things that would damage your skin. We cannot pretend or close our eyes and you know, act like we do not know that there are harmful products that we're probably using. So I hope that with this session, when you go home, you throw away the kum kum and seek professional hair, you know, I won't be pointing fingers, but you know, right, I can see you, just go and throw it away and, you know, use something right. So I'm going to start with Dr. Vivian, she's going to just throw in her last words and, and uh, my other speakers. And I know we have to move on to our next session, but I'm just going to make room for about three um, three of our wonderful um, audience. Okay, let's do the questions first, uh, first so that, ah, plenty has, wait now. Uh, all of you have kumkume, uh-uh. No, okay, I'm joking. All right, so um, can I have my lady to help me with the mic so that we can get the question for, uh, we have a lady on the left. You asked if AHA, which is the alpha hydroxy acid, if it's a bleaching cream? A bleaching agent, okay. What alpha hydroxies are there? Acids that um, exfoliate the skin. So it takes away the dead cells. So that's what it does. So usually when you're trying to correct pigmentation, we prescribe exfoliating agents. It could be vitamin A. It could be the alpha hydroxies to help slough away dead skin so that the agents for um, evening out the skin tone will penetrate easier. Sorry? Well, it depends on the strength and also the formulation. Now, there's several different AHAs. We have the glycolic acids, we have beta hydroxy acids, and we have lactic acids. So, I would say for me, glycolic is not the best for black skin in high concentrations because we can't control the depth. And since we're prone to scarring and hyperpigmentation, that would not be my first choice. Then, with vitamin A, which is another one, usually it's prescription. If it's not, the non prescriptions are available as well. Now, with the prescription strength, you must be under the supervision of a doctor, but they're very effective. And of course, they have the carcinogenic, uh, not, sorry, side effects that are <laughs> not carcinogenic. I mean, like if um, a woman is pregnant, we don't advise that she uses um, the vitamin A exfoliants, okay? Then salicylic acids are easy. Those, those are, are very safe. Skin. To exfoliate. If you're using scrubs, for instance, the mechanical exfoliations, I would say twice a week. If you have very bad skin, very thick, rough skin, you could use your glycolics or the alpha hydroxys every day. Oh, okay. Some of the. Okay, so these images are just coming up. Can I interrupt you so that we can. Do, can I? Now, now, like this, these two images. Wow. Yes, they are, but then he's just like, it's a slideshow going on. Okay, this shows um, side effects of extreme bleaching. 
You know what, could you go back to the previous image? Because that's what I want to talk about. Now you see the woman, the full length. You can see stretch marks all over her body. That's not normal. You know where stretch marks are usually found on the body? The buttocks, the thighs, sometimes the arms. But you can see that she has stretch marks. And she also has on her face. But, you know, her face is not shown. So this is as a result of steroid bleaching. Now the others are chemical burns from the top. You know, the, I told you some people add peroxides that are used for bleaching hair. And then also hair relaxers are added to bleaching creams. Yes, to give you the tingling effect and make you think something is going on. So that woman had burns, chemical burns from the hair relaxers from mixed creams. Can go to another slide. Okay, that's a typical glutathione babe. Yeah, what everybody's looking for nowadays, it seems. We're just showing you how effective it is. Go on. Now that's, uh, well, this is ochronosis, somebody who has abused hydroquinone. Hydroquinone in the regular prescription strengths, usually 4 to 12 percent. I would say 4 percent is the most I would give anyone because if you go higher, you have the risk of ochronosis. That's the kind of condition. It darkens the skin, which is very, now, it's very difficult to treat thereafter. Hydroquinone in non-prescription strengths are strafe. That's um, 2 percent. That won't do anything to you and probably won't give you the even skin tone you're looking for either. You will light it in patches. Next. Okay, that's another a man with steroid bleaching. You know, some men also want to get lighter. So that shows um, how extreme, how, how much he has changed. Another. Okay, now this is a marketplace where a woman is being injected with glutathione. Now that's an intramuscular injection. Usually, if you want the most rapid results, it's intravenous. We have people who are non-medical professionals injecting people intravenously with needles they've used for about 100 different people, so there's a risk of transmission of HIV, hepatitis, and various other diseases. Then there's also a risk of allergic reactions, and of the most severe of allergic reactions is Steven Johnson syndrome. Has anybody heard about this? That comes, you've heard, of course you have, <laughs> Samuel. Okay, now, next please. Okay, the big, you know, all the steroids. You know, when you see creams that say glow, carrot, papaya, um, what other common names do we have? Lemon was an old school name. Now it's, um, what, what, kojic, even glutathione soap. You know, most of the time they don't really tell you what the ingredients are. They're, they lie about the ingredients. They tell you it's all natural, it's all safe. But you know what's true. But you know that everything natural is not safe. You know that, right? And all chemicals are not bad either. Cyanide is natural. Is it safe? Heroin is natural. Is it safe? So this is, you know, don't be fooled by that. It's all safe. Next, please. Okay, another before. And this is a famous um, baseball player in America who has bleached himself. He looks worse bleached, in my opinion. Next, please. Now, this is a woman who's had a glutathione injection. And this is a Steven Johnson syndrome reaction. It's a severe anaphylactic reaction where usually patients die as a result of this type of um, reaction. And the skin blisters, we call it epidermal necrolysis. The skin blisters, dies, and falls off. And the patient dies like she, they actually look like they've had severe burns in a fire. Next. That's the last slide. It's the same patient. Just to let you know. I'm happy that these pictures are out there. And you know what? I have to give a shout out to everyone who's here. Everybody's looking good. I don't see any comb comb looking lady here. Everyone is looking nice. You know, I have to say. All right. Uh, one more question because we're pressed for time. We need to go on to our next slide. Where's someone with the mic? I'm not with the mic. Okay. Moisture was one of the things talked about for, to achieve a good skin. For example, I have a very oily face, so sometimes I don't apply anything on my face. Can I use like maybe share butter? What would your advice is on my face? Because naturally, if I don't cream my face, you can wipe my nose and... <laughs> Who's going to take that, Dr. Ju? So your question is, you have oily skin, you don't know if you should moisturize your face. Um, we find that 
moisturized skin, so hydrated skin that has lots of water, is more pliable, meaning it's nice and bendy. You're at less risk of having lines and wrinkles because um, those happen when the skin sort of breaks. So we want to keep the skin moisturized. You can do this by drinking lots of water. You can do this by using moisturizers. Your skin producing a lot of oil doesn't mean it also doesn't need water. So I'd usually recommend for someone that has oily skin a water-based lotion. So a hydrating moisturizer, and that's fine. If you feel your skin is really, really oily, then you can put you on products to sort of help calm down, calm that down a little bit, or go over what you're using that might be maybe making your skin have a rebound oil production, which I find some astringent toners would do. But I think it's good for everyone to be on a hydrating moisturizer. If you have dry skin, you can use a moisturizing moisturizer, but someone that has oily skin, you don't really want to be putting more oil on your face. So I'd recommend an oil-free moisturizer and a sunscreen over that. And just one quick tip to add to that. Um, if a product is labeled the right way, if you look on the ingredient list, the ingredients that make up the most of the product are listed first. And that's how you're able to tell if it's more water-based or if it's oil-based. So water will be listed first if it makes up most of the ingredient, and that's a good tip. Nice quick tip. All right, last words for, um, from our speakers. Well, I would say, uh, which I had mentioned before, please seek professional advice. Do not jump on the bandwagon because your friends are doing something you have to follow or you just... You know, just want to go to extremes. You could lose your life and also your beauty. Because I know someone, a patient of mine who ran away. I saw her at a wedding and she was as white as snow. That was about six months ago. I saw her last week. She is wrinkled and burnt. She looks like 30 years older. So I don't think it's a good idea. Last words. Um, on the topic of your best skin, don't underestimate the importance of your diet. Um, realize that sleep, while you're sleeping, your, store, your skin is restoring itself. It's regenerating. So you need to ensure that you're sleeping, that you're eating well, that you're exercising. To have your best skin, no matter what products you use, you have to take care of you as well. Um, on acne, I would say if acne is a problem for you, seek a consultation, don't take a medication or do what your friends are doing. Um, with hyperpigmentation, the number one way to prevent hyperpigmentation is using a sunscreen. I usually say avoid traumatizing black skin because there's a, list, there's a link with trauma and hyperpigmentation. So sunscreen, avoid traumatizing your skin, meaning picking out your skin. And if acne is a problem, seek a consultation. All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands together for our guests. I hope that we've learned something. Uh, only the people in the front are clapping. Uh-uh. Thank you.